there's none of the breakfast left over in my teeth <laughs> but that may well be um i've just had i don't know if anyone else keeps seeing them online but feta eggs are so good it's literally just a fried egg and then you sprinkle feta on top with your seasoning and it just tastes amazing so i've been having that with sourdough toast and then asparagus which is really random but i'm just trying to make my breakfasts as nutritious as possible because i'm finding that it's really helping with like energy levels and to get more protein in so yeah that's what i've had um and hopefully you can't see any of it it's tuesday and i just thought i would bring you along for a day and also actually as part of this vlog talk a little bit about how 2023 has been for me in relation to slow living because it's been a year of experimenting with like slow and more intentional living and based on that and like a little review what my intentions and how i'd want to move forward going into 2024 like what that looks like in relation to aspects and elements of slow living because i realized that i mean i don't want to put myself into a box of just being a creator that talks about slow living but a lot of my life is being influenced by elements of that so yeah i did it the other night and just wrote a load of things down i was journaling about it and i thought why not share it on here and talk about that process so yeah i'm going to include that in the vlog today i'm going to go upstairs now take my cup of tea up and make a bit of a plan for the day i've got some client calls i've actually got a call with a new manager so i'm getting help which i've probably needed for maybe like a year 18 months but nothing has ever felt right and i finally found someone where it feels right so yeah i've got a call about that um i'm also having some new branding there is a lot of things going on um and yeah, it feels really good. I'm in really good spirits actually this morning. Also just realised, you've probably just seen, I've had a candle lit breakfast for myself. I've got my candles lit because it was so dark this morning. And I just felt like I needed to have a bit of light in my life. So I lit my candles and had a candle lit breakfast. So as part of this vlog i would just sit down and talk about living a slower and more intentional life and how that actually translates into my days because this year i've made so many changes that have kind of happened over time and i'd also like to take a lot of those into next year and add a couple of things on i just thought i would speak about it because slow living was a completely new concept to me i was like a poster girl for hustle culture i was working 12 hour plus days yeah i was doing the most i didn't give myself any time to rest and obviously that led to me being burnt out if you're new here i yeah <laughs> i've had to start living a slow way of life basically to protect my mental health but also because it aligns with my values so much more like now i've actually stopped to slow down and think about what i actually want from life instead of feeling like i'm just being led there are so many changes that I've made because they just feel better for me. And I do just wanna say actually, these changes have felt uncomfortable. Even if you know something doesn't feel quite right in your current reality, it is still difficult to make that change. And these things have not happened overnight. They've been such a gradual process. And this is why I wanna talk a little bit more about next year and how I'd like to expand on them as well. And guess just talk very candidly and openly and honestly about what trying to live a slower life can look like and how it's been for me in my experience so basically last night i sat down and i wrote down a few things that i'd managed to do this year and how i want to build on them more as we go into the new year so i just thought i'd share them with you so first of all just to say like i put a bit of a definition here of following my heart and intuition just as a reminder that that is really what slow intentional living means to me it's really tapping into my own intuition my own values and what actually matters in my life but then also doing things with purpose i would say throughout most of my 20s a lot of the stuff that i did wasn't that purposeful i feel like i was coming at things from like a scarcity mindset there was a lot of fear around things doing things with purpose and having self-compassion and courage along the way is something that i'm really keeping in mind as we go into 2024 i've got it written down here and yeah for me, the kind of self-compassion and the courage elements of that are really important because it does take a lot of courage to step outside your comfort zone and change, even if it's a positive change. The first thing on this list is to stop buying from fast fashion brands. 
This year I made a huge change where I'd say kind of 50 to 60% of my wardrobe or the things that I was buying to add in were second hand, mostly from Vinted. I'll include a link in the description box or somewhere to a video that I did about Vinted because that has really allowed me to shop more sustainably and save money. So that's been brilliant. But I have still bought quite a few things. I wouldn't say many, maybe like 10 items or so, maybe a little bit less from fast fashion brands or retailers and I just don't need to. <laughs> I think that a lot of this comes down to like habit and that's just what I've been doing up until this point and I've realised that I would much rather spend a little bit more time. It, it, obviously it does take more time to kind of shop more sustainably, shop around, discover new places that are more sustainable brands and retailers but that is quite high on my list of intentions to do for 2024 and to just continue to support brands that are actually doing good things. Like, I don't wanna be buying from Zara or H&M or any of those brands that I've previously bought from before. Um, so yeah, my focus is to really buy high quality pieces if I am gonna buy, be really intentional with the purchases that I am making, and then again, trying to buy secondhand, or with this idea of also saving money and being resourceful in that way as well. So yeah, how I shop, both clothing wise, but also for our house. It's gonna be something that's really on my mind next year and something I wanna be really intentional about. The second thing that I've written down is focusing more on slower paced social media platforms. So this year, I've obviously come back to YouTube, I've joined Substack. Both of those platforms do not give me that kind of anxiety and overwhelm that I can get from the likes of Instagram and TikTok. It's just fact. And this year, I've really tried to experiment with using social media in different ways and figuring out what makes me feel good, what doesn't. I'm massively in a transitional phase with this, which I'm sure will carry on through into next year. But I have noticed that I generally feel better when I create for TikTok and Substack, and that is where I want most of my energy to go. I want to invest more in equipment for YouTube. I want to invest more in my writing skills for Substack and for photography in general, and kind of get back to the core of why I started creating in the first place. I'm gonna be honest, it feels really scary because Instagram and TikTok have kind of become a part of my job and my income streams and work. And I do enjoy the sense of connection that you can get from there. But I'm also just seeing this as a time to experiment. Like life is long. I don't wanna be going through life feeling like I'm kind of chained to these platforms or, you know, because I post as well, it gives me a dopamine boost. I just don't wanna be a part of that cycle as much anymore. And the reality is when you're a creator and you're sharing a lot, or even if you're just someone that's on social media and you're scrolling, it's impacting our brains, it's impacting our sense of self, comparison can creep in. There are just a lot of issues that I'm really aware of around that and exploring more kind of digital minimalism in 2024 is quite a high priority for me. I don't really know how that looks yet. I need to figure that out but it's something that I'm really conscious of and again coming back to that thing of doing things with purpose when I do show up on those platforms I want it to be way more meaningful and have way more purpose and be rooted in my values not just kind of post it for the sake of it or because the algorithm says you need to do xyz. The other thing on the list is continuing to deepen my yoga practice including yoga nidra into that so I'm a yoga teacher I'm currently doing a course on yoga nidra and these practices just, I feel like they sustain me. They are my way to stay connected to myself, to my values. I, they're the practices that made me explore slower, more intentional living because I realized when I was going inwards that a lot of my external world wasn't making me happy. So really just continuing to get to know myself through these practices and then obviously sharing that online in person as well some days it might look like a five minute meditation another day i might do a 25 minute yoga nidra i think that it's going to be again a case of experimenting but knowing that dedicating the time to doing that is wise and again coming back to that doing things with purpose the purpose is because it connects me to myself and then i'm able to offer it to others as well fourth thing on this list is exploring more around frugal living saving money and investing so I guess everything under the bracket of like financial well-being. This has been a huge part of my life for quite a few years. I have always been quite driven when it comes to money and wanting to earn money and then save it and kind of 
squirrel it away and previously actually I've had I've not been very good at allowing myself to spend the money I earn to have enjoyment there's been quite a few issues for me around anxiety with money not feeling a sense of security and just not allowing myself to enjoy what I have so there's definitely a balance to be had with this but ultimately I know that for me being more frugal being mindful of my money being aware of what I'm spending on makes me feel good and knowing that I have security is just it's really important for like for me my nervous system my sense of self and looking at investing and how I can maximize the money that I do have even more going into 2024 is a top priority for me because as much as I can have anxiety about money and try and be kind of frugal I also shy away from it because it does bring up anxiety and yeah it's something that I just want to look at more next year and kind of dedicate a good amount of time to something that i do do something i do do something i've been doing every month probably not even just this year previous years is having set days where i review my finances and that has been amazing that's really put me at ease because it just brings that element of control and awareness because when i've got awareness of it i don't feel anxious it's when i feel like i just don't know what's going on that my mind can spiral and worry about the fact that I might not have enough. Yeah, just exploring more around frugal living, ways we can save money, ways we can invest and maximise. And I mean, for me, this really links into that top point about kind of no fast fashion, just think about what I'm spending on and just being more mindful. And I feel like I've actually done a really good job of this this year. Um, we've spent much more on experiences than we have on stuff. And yeah I felt really good for that so just continuing to do that probably setting some more kind of specific intentions with it to help me actually take that first step um but yeah definitely something around finances the next thing on this list is reading more fiction this year I have massively connected with reading for pleasure in a way that I never have before for me it was always reading sort of non-fiction to better myself for personal development I do still enjoy reading those books but I realised that not everything has to be in the pursuit of self-development and as trying to kind of live a slower life and rest more reading has really really helped me do that it's helped me think more about like the relationship with my phone and social media just it's been amazing actually how much reading fiction and immersing myself in these stories and allowing myself to do that has been such a comfort this year so I'm really just looking forward to reading more. Me and a friend have actually just set up a book club which is starting in January so I'll have that accountability there to help me read a little bit more but also explore things around characters and what I think about certain books because I still feel like I mean I'm so at the beginning of this journey of knowing what kind of things I like to read so obviously the book club is really going to help me with this intention because I'll have that set deadline of when I need to read the book by especially because I'm hosting a book club last and final thing on the list is kind of like a two-in-one um but it's experiences over things and savoring the small moments while I'm there and on this like I've listed a couple of things that I'd like to do more of a big thing and a big theme of it is spending more time outdoors so I really love camping and I rarely go so scheduling dates in to go camping more gardening I've got a holiday with friends potentially that we're looking at booking a holiday with my family my get back into wild swimming when the weather warms up camping hiking I've also spoke about friends about potentially doing the three peaks <laughs> another thing that I've just realized I didn't put on the list which is really important is the fact that I'm still having EMDR therapy so I have written about this on my substack in a series of diaries and I'm exploring it over there because it's so hard to put into words I don't know if I'll end up doing a YouTube video on it but basically I'm currently having EMDR therapy it's quite an intense form of therapy and oh, I, <laughs> I was just about to say healing journey I hate that phrase for some reason it just yeah I don't know but I guess I could call it my EMDR experience I want to continue to heal and go through the motions which is probably going to be quite difficult but trusting that it's for there, there will be benefits and there will be positives through that and at the end of that and I guess going into 2024 having hope 
this year has been a really good year but it's actually been really hard and really confronting in a lot of ways and I guess that it's kind of made me think about how we can have these difficult experiences like going to therapy and having to work through things and heal certain things yet experience joy and live with intention and purpose at the same time and that is something that I want to continue do, to do as I move into the new year allow myself to process things there's going to be bad days allow myself to rest alongside that but also allow myself to experience the joy um which is something that I didn't allow myself to do for a lot of years I worked myself into the ground and didn't give myself time to just enjoy life so yeah that's where I'm at and that's how I feel I have been rambling on for 20 minutes so I'm going to finish this vlog here thank you for watching the next video won't be on Sunday because it's Christmas Eve so I'm gonna upload it a couple of days later probably in that weird time in between Christmas and New Year so hopefully more of you will see it and get a chance to watch it um so yeah I hope that you have a really lovely Christmas if you celebrate and I will see you in the next video bye